As the sun rises over the South Pole in September, it provides a spark of energy for chemistry that eats away at the ozone layer. It's amazing. It's one of the biggest, fastest chemical reactions in the world driven by sunlight. And very high concentrations of ozone in the stratosphere are reduced by half. Within a month, they go to zero in a certain layer of the atmosphere. The ozone layer is so important in protecting us from ultraviolet radiation. If you remove just a small percentage of the ozone around the world, you're going to affect plant life, you're going to cause cancer uh, in increases, you're going to affect plankton formation in the oceans. So for the ozone hole to form, we need several conditions. We need very cold temperatures, which is what's happening during the winter time over Antarctica. And those very, very cold temperatures, as low as, low as about minus 109 Fahrenheit, they create the special clouds that are called polar stratospheric clouds. And these clouds contain small particles, uh, ice crystals, and on the surface of these uh, particles, there is some special chemistry that happens. And all of these man-made chemicals that we produce, chlorofluorocarbons, for example, they become uh, activated, and with the sunlight, these chemicals become very active and they start to destroy ozone. The fast, high-altitude winds of the seasonal Antarctic vortex create the perfect environment for those man-made chemicals to destroy ozone. It's like putting a match in this thousand square mile pool of high volatile gasoline. It's gone, just like that. In 2012 so far, about 20 megatons of ozone has been destroyed. That's about the weight of three Hoover dams. 2006 was worse. That year, ozone loss totaled 40 megatons, or six Hoover dams. There's two ways that we measure ozone at the South Pole. One is with bloomborne ozone sounds, that's what I'm involved with. And then there's also a ground-based instrument that looks up at the sun and moon as well to get total column ozone. That's called uh, the Dobson spectrophotometer. Well, NOAA has been measuring ozone with a Dobson spectrophotometer for about 50 years now and the ozone sons, the balloon-borne ozone sons for uh, 25 years, uh, a little more. These balloon sons uh, go about 10 miles an hour up through the atmosphere and they'll reach about 21 miles altitude and during that two hour or so period that's sending back ozone data, about one line every, every second or one point every second. Levels of ozone depleting chemicals in the atmosphere have plummeted but they can last decades. NOAA's ozone measurements in the Antarctic Spring help us understand ozone depletion where it is the most severe and where we could detect signs of early recovery in the next few decades. In 2011, similar conditions formed over the Arctic in the Northern Hemisphere. That year, ozone depleting conditions persisted much longer than usual up north and the stratosphere was very cold. As climate warms up, more energy is going to be held near the Earth, so it's going to get colder high up in the atmosphere, the stratosphere. That could cause more of these temperatures getting to minus 80 and bigger holes. So that is a concern. So the Arctic is being monitored very carefully because there's a lot of people live at that latitude. There's a lot of fisheries. There's a lot of uh, potential harm that can happen in the Arctic. Well, NOAA is an organization that's um a part of a, a broad range of governmental and university and academic organizations that are keeping track of the ozone layer and doing measurements all around the globe, whether from satellite, ground-based, or balloon-borne. And all these organizations kind of work together in keeping track of the ozone layer. And with all that information coming together, we can get a good idea, a good picture of, of what we can predict for the future. Mm -hmm.